Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and uh, a very good evening to all. Yang Berusa Mr. Chia Chuan Yong, uh, Chairman of the International Strategy Institute, ISI, uh, my brother Tan Sri Abu Qasim, the Chairman of uh, GIACC, my good friend Dato Azman Mujang, uh, it's a great honor to have you Dato Azman. Mr. Chairman of Bernama, um, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to join all of you here today at the Malaysia Anti-Corruption Forum. I'm very pleased to see such an encouraging gathering of eminent business leaders, government officers and NGO leaders who are all committed to furthering one of the main priorities of the Pakatan Havarapan government, which is to eradicate corruption from Malaysia. Forums such as this will help maintain the momentum and discussion on the government's crusade against corruption so that it reaches every part of society. I would like to commend the organizer, the International Strategy Institute, for this initiative. Corruption is recognized as one of the world's greatest challenges and an obstacle for sustainable development. The poorest in all societies are the ones hit the hardest. As corruption benefits the corrupt and wealthy while siphoning away funds from social and infrastructure development. Corruption robs the world's poor of billions of dollars every year as it increases in quality and unfairness hampers economic development and drives up price for products and services. The impact on the private sector is also considerable. Corruption hinders economic growth, distorts competition, and presents serious legal and reputational risk. Corruption is very costly for businesses as well with the extra financial burden estimated to add 10% or more to the cost of doing business in many parts of the world. The World Bank has stated that bribery has become a $1 trillion industry. The Pakatan Harapan government is unwavering in our commitment to combat corruption. Various measures have been taken by the government and the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC, to stamp out corruption in this country, and these efforts have begun to bear fruits. Malaysia has improved its position on Transparency International's Corruption Perception Index, Reporters Without Borders World Press Freedom Index, and advanced nine places to 15 spots out of 190 countries in the World Bank's Doing Business 2019 report, in all those indexes, corruption is a key indicator. Ladies and gentlemen, in the midst of this ongoing battle against corruption, I would like to elucidate on the roles that three important stakeholders play for our crusade against corruption to succeed. First, the role of leaders. Corruption is incipient in every society and must be continuously purged. Leadership by example in the highest echelons of the government is critical in achieving a state where citizens do not condone corrupt practices. As the saying goes, a fish rots from the head. The rivers must also be true. Only when the core leadership of a country is clean can corruption be gradually diminished. Leaders must be committed to integrity and embody accountability and anti-corruption. This is a principle that leaders in the Pakatan Harapan government take to heart. All Pakatan Harapan members of parliaments have made asset declaration to MACC. We have also taken this a step further by publishing the information online on mydeclaration.sprm.government.my where it is accessible to all. Personally, I have, de I have also declared my assets to the public through Invoke Malaysia, even before the general elections. I 
at my personal level, I did declare my assets before the general election uh, to participate in the election. I did so because I firmly believe that leaders must be fully accountable and transparent with the people, and I will happily continue to do so. The Pakatan Harapan government have also adopt, adopted a no-gift policy where cabinet ministers are not allowed to accept gifts valued more than 500 ringgit Malaysia, other than flowers, food and fruits. Late last year, I received a painting as a gift during an event. As I estimated that the painting was worth more than 500 ringgit, I auctioned it off on the spot to raise funds for charity. And alhamdulillah, the price of that painting was about 20,000 ringgit. You know? um, through these ongoing efforts, it is hoped that the rest of the nation can see the dedication and commitment of our current leaders to combat corruption and embody the same principles in their lives. Ladies and gentlemen, second, the role of the government. Recent data released by MSCC revealed that 46.3% out of 4,860 individuals detained for graphs from 2014 to June 2019 were civil servants. This is a grave cause for concern. Most of the graph cases involve staff from the procurement sector and 53.4% out of the 4,860 individuals detained were aged 40 and below. Further, a study conducted by MACC revealed that 22% of respondents from the civil service said that they were willing to receive bribes if they had power or positions. This shows that there is an urgent need for the government to institutionalize anti-corruption efforts. In January this year, Dr. Mahathir unveiled a five-year national anti-corruption plan, NACP, which reflects the people's aspiration for a greater corrupt-free nation that promotes transparency, accountability, and integrity. The NACP is an aspiration for Malaysia to be known for integrity and not corruption. However, we must do much more. Anti-corruption must also be institutionalized in every ministry and agency. Alhamdulillah, at the Ministry of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs, we pride ourselves for being one of the first ministries to receive and develop an organizational anti-corruption plan based on the NACP, which will be launched at the end of September. We are among the first immediately after the launching by the Prime Minister. I wanted it to be the Ministry of Domestic Trade to be the first to... Uh, come out with our own plan, inshallah. If all work and move according to the plan, by September, uh, we hope that we would be able to launch it uh, at the ministry. Inshallah, I will invite Tansi Abu Qasim as well. Uh, we have formulated 94 anti-corruption initiatives which will be carried out via the OACP, Organizational Anti-Corruption Plan, such as the implementation of a whistleblower policy to provide channels for anonymous reporting and a reward system for those who report cases of corruption, a prohibition on accepting support letters issued by influential persons when carrying out official duties, a prohibition on receiving gifts decentralization of decision-making through delegation of power to committees and the provision of financial education for officers who are in the, in the debt. Ladies and gentlemen, third, the role of the people. The fight against corruption could not be mounted, let alone be won by policies, campaigns, laws, and punitive measures imposed by the government alone. The fight against corruption must involve every member of society. This is the most important aspect as, in a democracy, true power lies with the people. 
during the last general election, Malaysians overwhelmingly voted to change the government due to dissatisfaction with multiple unresolved corruption scandals. All those leaders are on trial today. I urge all of you to continue to hold us accountable. Be ever vigilant and unforgiving to any instances of corruption. Feel free to report any acts of corruption to the MACC regardless of who committed it. Cooperate with the government by reporting using existing channel and criticize us publicly and freely if there is no action taken. It is only when there is strong, vocal and unwavering public opposition towards corruptions that the government is forced to be ever vigilant. We are here to serve you. Remember that you have the power and hold us accountable to that promise. Ladies and gentlemen, Malaysia has to keep fighting corruption wherever it exists and however difficult it may be. This is because creating a corrupt-free nation is not only for you and me in the present, but for the future generation. Together, we can build strong institutions and a legacy that will outlast all of us so that no matter which government is in power and no matter who is in office, they will be held accountable to the system and the people. Only by working together can we create a corruption-free Malaysia and ensure a better future for our children. And before I end my speech, I would like to once again congratulate the organiser, the International Strategic Institute, for this wonderful forum. I should congratulate Mr Chia personally. Thank you very much, Mr Chia. I hope that all of you will take the many lessons and insight gained from today's discussion back with you and embody it in your life. We have to keep our own house clean as no one else can do it for us. On that note, I declare the Malaysia Anti-Corruption Forum closed. Thank you.